start. Ding. Okay, three, two, <clears throat> one. Hello, everyone. Welcome to episode 104. I titled this New Year, New Problems. But I think what we really want to call this is CES and the Internet of Things just went wildly out of control. Like, like holy crap, what, just everything's out of control. So instead of, we don't have any like major earth shattering news that affects you, but you're going to see all these things wirelessly enabled. And I, I don't want to say the world will end, but you're going to, we're not going to be out of a job anytime soon. Let's just say that. Yeah, unfortunately. <laughs> so, so I recently bought a house and it's, uh, and everything I'm buying for it is now smart. So the house came with three Nest thermostats. So I'm kind of stoked for that. Like, I, I think it's cool that uh, that you can do this. And they are by far the furthest along with this technology. So I'm not too concerned. I mean, I we, we spoke about this. I'm not really concerned that Nest is going to, like, fry me or cool me out of the house. I'm not that concerned that I don't think there's a hidden camera in this. I don't think that Google is going to sell me ads based on my heating or cooling situation. And their app seemed okay, but again, who knows? Who knows what we'll find in six months, a year, two years, five years, and hopefully that they can fix whatever problems they are instead of, oh, if you want to be secure, secure you have to buy a new thermostat. So I'm really stoked about Nest. Uh, the next thing we got was a garage door opener. So the garage door opener, this is the best of the best. This is the top of the line model. I don't know anything about garage doors. This is a Chamberlain series. It's $150 more than the next highest price. And I let my contractor do it. He said, this is the best. I said, okay. I go, Wait, why does it have a wireless app? He goes, so you can open your enclosure door from your phone. And I said, why would you ever want to do that? Why would I remotely want to open my door? He goes, well, what happens if it closes? Like you forgot to close your door. And I said, this can't be a problem. This shouldn't be a thing. And he goes, yeah, people forget to close it all the time. And I said, okay, but what does Chamberlain know about a, uh, securing yourself? And, and and I got the running joke that, uh, well, they do make garage door openers and closers. They do know security. So they know physical security. What do they know about a remote code execution? Yeah, and, and a lot of these things, you know, you'll you hear just like with you know the auto manufacturers that make the wireless keys, um, you know, with no, oh, it's totally secure, it's keyless entry. But as we've seen, you know, totally susceptible to replay attacks in some circumstances, totally susceptible to uh, you know people using uh, range extenders for the keys and just driving off with your car um, with. Thirteen dollars for the hardware you can get on eBay or uh, or Radio Shack. Um, these these people don't know what they're doing all the time. And I don't know how hard it is to. So with the garage door opener, you have to be. It has to be connected to Wi-Fi. Think about that for a second. So if you have a detached car uh, garage, which I do, it has to go through the cement wall that is the garage, then through your outdoor uh situation and through the walls through the router the signal can't be that strong so how good is it really and they're gonna say oh just get a range extender it's like really just to open and close my garage door there has to be a different way maybe i should just run ethernet to it i mean that may work but <laughs> does does your garage door opener have an ethernet port on it i can we jerry rig something i mean not usually but you never know. I mean, can we take it? Well, we can't take it apart. That would be in violation of the DMCA. Yeah, yeah. We, so we would definitely get in trouble for that. I don't know. Maybe we get some, like, microwave uh, USB signals to it. Like, put, like, a put something that can just, like, beam form something to it. We we'll, we'll do an, an IR blaster. We can cantenna it. Now there's an idea. We can cantenna it. I can put a huge – and see how far we can get it. Put some high gain uh, antennas on it with some cantennas on it, directly aiming, beaming towards the garage door, so I can get a better signal to open and close my doors from remote. You know, and I thought I had it around here. I've got a nice uh, directional antenna. Um, it's just big, long thing. We could just hook it up to an alpha card and point it right at it. That'll totally work. So again, we look. We picked this topic, and then, and then even more scary is uh, with the new house, new washer, new dryer, new stove, 
my washer and dryer has, who knew LG has smart diagnostic tool app for your washer and dryer. You can start and stop your washer and dryer from your, your couch. And it's like, well, does it move the clothes for you? Because if not, that's kind of a waste. You see, now that, that is something I would pay for. But I, Out of all the smart things, I would pay for it to take work off of me. I mean, we can build a robotic arm, I guess, that can reach in and put there. But, th like, what what are we possibly gaining? You can't push the button? I guess. I understand. This, this is a thing. It's it's. I put the clothes in the dryer, and they're not dry yet, and I forgot to push the button, or... I know that they're not dry through some sort of osmosis. And I said, you know what? It could use 10 more minutes. Bam, hit the app and it turns on. But if, if your dryer is smart enough to have an app and an internet connection that it's managing and all of these sensors built into it, couldn't it just look at the water content in the air inside of the dryer and go, hmm, I think this needs 10 more minutes. I think the clothes should be about 5% humidity. That's what we're aiming for here in this dryer and do its own calculation. Well, they got a little more greedy. So one of the things on the app is <laughs> custom cycles. So that the right now they're free, ready for in-app purchases. <laughs> hold on, hold on a minute. Seriously, in-app purchases for your washer and dryer. Well, it has custom cycles, right? So what's the next well, step to say? What would what, what would you even need a custom cycle for? It now, I, I am not a laundry expert. I am I, oh, I'm still stuck it. on the you know what happens with permanent press versus just throw it all on hot, and I'm I'm trying to wrap my brain around this. But custom cycles, how custom do you need to get with soap, clothing, and water? Well, I'm posting it up. Here are the custom cycles. We have small load, color care, beach wear, new clothes, denim. Sportswear, baby wear, kids wear, swimming wear, rainy day, gym clothes, blanket, sweat stain, and single garments. What is rainy day? Uh, oh, I, I'll just throw it in real quick for this rainy day wash. It'll be done in a minute. This cycle washes clothes made slightly wet by rain. It's rain. It's water. Well, if you live in uh, if you live in one of those uh, Republican states that doesn't believe in, <laughs> in environmental something, it could be fracking water that like lights on fire. <laughs> so so it's raining acid rain, and it'll it'll rebuild your clothes after they get torn apart by the acid. So I'm in demo mode, so I, I can't go as far as I want with this. But press the cycle download button if you want to download the cycle. Previously downloaded cycles will be deleted. This is ripe for, well, we have this ultra special humidity sensor engagement tool. This will only cost you five coins, five LG currency coins. This is absolutely ridiculous. So I, I can't even believe this was a thing. Like I, I realize this is the logical conclusion. This is what the internet has been working towards its entire existence, but I still cannot wrap my mind around washers and dryers in-app purchases phone app i just can't do well, it well we can remote start so it'll tell me how much time is left which i guess is good before you have to go to the basement because it has yeah, the, that's, a super that's nice. quiet feature like i kind of like my washers to make a little noise like just a little to know that they're still working it gives me an estimated time remaining what time you can change in the in the middle of it the soil level, the spin speed, and the temperature. Now, I I might be old school, but I really like the washers and dryers that you know you you turn it on and it has the time displayed on it, and then I take I take my portable pocket supercomputer that I carry with me everywhere that talks to outer space to connect to other portable pocket supercomputers. Um, and, and I type numbers into here and it'll beep when that time has elapsed, but yeah, you know, that's, that's just me. Okay. I'm, I'm a very old school person. Okay. Here, this is a built in, this is a built in cycle. So I have powerful wash for food stained baby clothing for sleeves, hems, and collars for tough juice and food stains for blood stains convenience for nighttime washing 
Now, what's nighttime washing? I would think that it washes at night. Utilizes the rolling wash motion to reduce wash cycle noise and continue tumbling upon completion of the cycle to prevent the onset of wrinkles. I, I guess that's kind of cool that you can set it for, hey, you know, don't wake me up at night in case the thing is jostling everywhere. But if it's already quiet... I mean, are you sleeping next to your washer? Well, I'm going to be two floors away, but I guess the new thing in building <laughs> houses is you kind of want the washing machine and dryer on the same floor that your closet's in, so you don't have to walk up and down. The problem is I am deathly scared, not deathly scared, but I'm really, really scared of an accidental, the hose just exploding, which is a thing. Your washer leaks, and now you have this huge flood on your second floor, right over your kitchen, and then the floor breaks and all this. Other oh, stuff. but yeah. apparently there's there's like sensors for that now. There's there's a there's Ooh. a pill for that. <laughs> I, well, hey, you know, it's it's that kind of stuff. It's it's the little safety things that'll prevent damage or just the tiny conveniences without a bunch of unnecessary complication that I can get behind, like the nest. I have to say, for all the Internet of Things, the Nest is really the only one that I like. I love the Nest. It it shuts it off when it knows we're asleep and we don't care. If we're gone, it turns off the AC. I set the temperature. It goes, oh, it's going to get colder later today. I'm not going to run the AC. It'll just get cold naturally. And it does. It's great. It actually, it's really the only device of this type that saved me money and hasn't been a giant pain. Well... The the only problem I have with Nest, and this is not necessarily a Nest problem, this is a Google Amazon problem, is I can't go, hey, uh, hey, I don't know, what's the secret code word? They don't call it, hey, Echo, because you can't say the other word. Hey, Echo, uh, turn on or off my Nest. You can't do that. But my garage door opener with an IFTTTT recipe can, when the garage door opens, turn on my nest to make it warmer or cooler so i have a few minutes of it preheating or pre-cooling but shouldn't the nest because it's a learning thermostat shouldn't it say oh well you get home on these days at about this time so i'm going to make sure it's a proper temperature before you walk in the door well you at least that's that's what mine does. yes well I, look we don't have fios i don't have internet over there yet so i, I can't reset all the statistics yet and can't play with it uh, right now it's okay. set on off mode uh, away mode at like 62 degrees or something like that so and I don't know. My house at 62 seems surprisingly warm. Maybe I just don't know what 62 degrees is. But again, it's it's here. We gave you three examples. And the last example we just saw is, so we have the washer, the dryer, the garage door opener, the, the thermometer. We have the new stove. Now, I just got a new stove. I don't know if it's smart enabled, but this can't be a good thing. I don't know why that just sounds dangerous. Why your stove needs to be smart enabled. I, I, I don't get it. Like I understand the stupid features. My wife swears up and down by delayed bake, which apparently is like you can you can say, you know what, turn this on in 10 minutes. I guess if you know that your steak's gonna be an hour and then your french fries are gonna be like 25 minutes. So you set delayed bake for 40 minutes so it ends up at the same time, but I don't know why. This is a good thing. Why you need a smart I, stove? I I don't get that, and is I I don't get so. Let me let me collect my thoughts. I don't understand why these smart features require an internet connection. Like like for instance, let's say delayed bake is some sort of super smart feature from the future. Isn't it just a timer? Don't stoves and microwaves have clocks built in already? Well, I found out that that's not true. So at our new house, the previous owners had a Viking stove. Vikings are extremely, incredibly expensive, just like Leica cameras. And on really expensive things that are mechanical beauties, they don't have any buttons. So they have five knobs with barely any numbers because numbers look ugly. So I don't have a timer. I have a burner with a couple handles, but that's it. So that was one of the reasons for trying to sell this stove because it doesn't have any of these features. It doesn't have a self-clean feature. It doesn't have, like, I'm lucky it has a light in the oven. So, so, so it's like it's like an early 1980s BMW, except 
it still lasts. Like it still looks like a brand new 1980s BMW. <laughs> so it's look the, the this 14 minute this 15 minute intro is because CES is going on, and you're going to see a lot of things, and they're going to try and pedal their their pre made apps for you to do things like a Samsung refrigerator with an Android tablet, so you can see what's inside your refrigerator. What like they can't just make it a clear door. <sighs> yeah. This this okay. This is going to take a, a little bit of um, a little bit of participation from the audience. I'm going to need you to go to your imagination, enable your imagination, turn it on right now. All right, imagine a man in a sharply dressed suit. He walks on stage. the The place is filled. There's like two thousand people, and they're all sitting there, facing forward, watching this man. And he's in front of these big giant screens, and he says, "This." This is our new product. This is what we're going to sell you because this is the best thing we have ever come up with. We taped an iPad to this frigid air. <laughs> and then everyone stands up and they start clapping and they go nuts. We just raised the price. That's, we just raised the price $500. That is the world we're living in today. I mean, look, I, I told you this before show. The thing that I would want is like a milk sensor or an egg sensor that can tell me when I'm at the store, do I need eggs? Yes or no? I, I don't know what that takes, but that, that requires the, like the entire cast of engineers to figure this out. I don't need my TV. I don't need uh, what is it, TV monitoring on the Samsung. I don't need to be watching TV. They've, um, they've got this, this feature, like this man in the suit is on stage, and he's saying, look, you can now, if you have a Samsung refrigerator and a Samsung television, because, of course, they have to be in the same ecosystem, and they both have to be smart, uh, you can now watch your TV on your refrigerator because you know when you when you're standing there looking for something to drink and then you shut the fridge or you really want to see the program that you've been watching so you can stand there hunched over next to the refrigerator continuing to stare at it that's what i really need also it has a built-in speaker so you can entertain your friends and family with its streaming music services and if you don't like the built-in speaker don't worry it's got bluetooth so you can pair nicer speakers to it Oh, and then we have Amazon Dash buttons. What is this? So let's put Amazon Dash buttons on everything. So the kids can just push oh. some buttons for you and just order a whole lot more other nonsense. Yeah, yeah. It's I I understand like the some of the things make a little bit of sense, but in execution they they utterly fail. I know um over Christmas Samsung refrigerators or some smart refrigerator got an update and Google Calendar stopped working. And everyone freaked out because Google changed their API and Samsung didn't move fast enough. So their API got deprecated. And now everyone's Samsung smart refrigerators, Google Calendar is no longer working. And everyone was complaining because that was the big killer feature is having the calendar on the refrigerator. I get it, but aren't we carrying the, the pocket supercomputers that have this calendar directly connected to outer space and then back down again? So we can get, you know, updates on, yes, we have to go to grandma's tonight on, on our pocket supercomputers. Don't we already have devices that do that? I, I don't want to sound like an old curmudgeon, but I don't need Google Calendar on the front of my fridge. I don't need a grocery list on the front of the fridge. Well, that's exactly, uh, that's, exactly that's, where you need the grocery list. <laughs> so so I, I have actually solved this problem on my dumb refrigerator because I do. it's a nice dumb refrigerator, but it's, it's really dumb. Um, I've got a notepad and there's a magnet strip on the back, and I stuck it to the front of the fridge, and then I sat a pen on top of that. So every time I need milk or eggs or, or Coke or whatever, I take the cap off the pen. It's a pretty complicated process, and I physically write on the dead tree. Well, we had this. We had a smarter version of this problem. So we got an Alexa, and I showed my wife that you could scream from the kitchen, Hey, Echo, uh, put milk on the grocery list. And it'll say, adding milk to the grocery list. And she goes, well, the problem is, how am I going to find my grocery list? And I'm like, we, do, I have to ask, uh, do I have to ask the Echo before? Turns out in the app, it actually saves it. So there's a really good That's device. Nice. So basically, let's, off, let's offload all the smart things to a central hub that we just have to scream to. Like, as loud as we can. Hey, Echo, put this on my to-do list or this on my... But you know what? 
it solves that problem because the other thing that happens is I, I, my wife goes to shop, right? I go to Costco and now we don't know what's on the grocery list from the other store that we need to buy or not buy. <laughs> so it's, this is, this is just, this is just crazy. And, and unfortunately, and we keep on saying there's just two problems. Samsung, I'll give props because I think they have sort of the security model down to say that this company, I mean, Nest, Nest member, Google bought Nest, so they're working with the security. I trust Amazon with their security. I mean, so far, Samsung, sort of. I mean, they're not they're not this no name company. They 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 do have something, so their security at least they can hire people. But you're you're trusting whatever it is inside your house to this company who we don't know nothing about. We don't know what they're going to do. What does what does VTech know about? They make children's toys about internet security. They don't. They don't know anything. What is what does Mattel know about internet security, right? So so let's go to so you have that. So I think Samsung's running this all on Tizen, which is based on Android, but still Tizen. So that's their way of introducing Tizen to everything, which may not be a bad idea. And I get it, but to have your oven start up or to have your nest thermostat go crazy because of all this. And the a more annoying thing is. Now that I'm moving into a house and I'm saying, you know what? I want to be smart. There's no, there's no one standard. You have to buy this hub or that hub or the other hub or this thing. And you don't know who's going to win at the end. And you have to replace them all when it's done. This, this is, and I'm, I'm going to sound like an old Unix curmudgeon, but I am an old Unix curmudgeon. This is why I love the idea of the Unix principle where you take little things and you segment them out, right? You don't make big monolith systems. I don't want to have to buy a Samsung smart kitchen and make sure I've got the Samsung smart TV and then the Samsung smart Blu-ray player and then the Samsung branded, you know, game station. I, I want little components that I can just tear out if they become less useful or dumb or they break and replace them with other tiny components. Case in point, I've got an ancient, old school, not at all smart, it's just a dumb monitor Samsung TV. To make it smart, I bought a Roku and then I bought a Chromecast. If I hate the Chromecast one day, I've got the Roku. If I don't like this Roku anymore, I can throw it away and replace it with Boxy or an Apple TV or a Roku stick or uh, the upgraded Roku 4. I can replace it with anything else entirely if I really wanted to. I could put a computer there and hook the computer to the TV and it would do the same exact thing. Um, with your refrigerator, I mean, how long do you usually keep a fridge? Is it, you know, is it a three-year purchase? Are you buying a new fridge every three years like you buy your Galaxy? No, no, you don't. You're keeping that thing for 10 years minimum. Well, hold Are, on there. I will tell you from personal experience that in my seven-year-old kitchen, we've replaced all the appliances. So what happened is they learned that if you make something built of build quality, people don't replace it all that often. So what do they do? They made it with less quality, so you have to replace it. So just just for your information, if you're buying new appliances, expect them to last five months longer than the warranty, which is about five years. So in my new in my old house, which I'm which is not that old, it's we replaced the wash a washer part, a dryer part, a dishwasher part, a brand new microwave, and I mean that's all we know of right now. And look, seven years later, we're getting a new washer, a new dryer, a new stove because we moved. But there you go. So they're making them last only five to seven years. But again, they're still not going to update any of this stuff. I don't think your refrigerator is going to have a, uh, a firmware update. Like it's not getting the latest Android patch. So yeah, so they you know they come out with a new model what every six months, every year for big appliances. Mm -hmm. What happens when your fridge is eight years out of date, right? Do you think they're still going to be releasing Android builds for that? No. No. Tell someone you've got a two-year-old phone and you're expecting security updates. Just watch the, the joke come across their face. They'll just start laughing hysterically like, ah, uh, OS updates on a phone that's more than a year old. Yeah, good luck with that. Uh, so what's going to happen to your, your big smart TV, right? What's going to happen to your refrigerator? You don't have these little components you can replace. You have to replace the whole thing. Yeah, I'm. I'm just. I'm waiting for the day when they sell the smart house, and you get the house, and they say, "Okay, you'll have to replace this. We're going to tear it down and rebuild it in two years." 
but don't worry because you'll pay less for it because you're on contract. Oh, it's good. Yeah, it's going to be. There. I'm waiting. It's it's one of those. Everyone said, "Do I buy a smart TV?" And I said, "No," because they don't know how to make UI. Buy yourself an Apple TV, a Roku, a Chromecast, somebody who does this that you can plug in. And they go, "Well, the remote does all this stuff." I said, "Yeah, but you're buying a cable vision, or you're buying a cable TV remote, or a FiOS remote. They're going to make you put their box ahead of it. So you're going to have to switch the input, have a different remote. It's not going to be as simple as you think. So you might as well buy something that you're familiar with." that has all these cool features. And if it doesn't work, you change it out. Cause like I said, I think most people buy a TV now once every 10 years or so, 11 years. I mean, that sounds about right. I'm, I'm looking for a TV now and it's been about 10 years. Yeah. So it's like, we're moving, like I said, we're moving to the new house. I'm thinking I need bigger, but in reality, my TV is perfectly fine. I mean, a cheap Vizio is still good and it's not smart. It's not 3d. I wish the picture quality was a little bit better. But remember, 4K isn't standard yet. I mean, so you might as well so wait. If, if you'd like to go to like a big box store, like a Walmart, Best Buy, Target, if you want to see those people work and work hard, walk up to them and tell them you want a big TV without any of the smart stuff. And just just watch them freak out and try to solve that problem for you. I have had, for the past year, a TV saved on my Amazon wish list. It's from 2012, and it is one of the last Samsung dumb TVs available. Uh, and uh, I, I think I'm going to end up going with that when, uh, when it comes to be TV time. Well, t- don't go to a big box store. Go to a little mom and pop shop and tell them the exact opposite. If you want to go and you want to say – so I went to them and I said, look. Um, we're looking for a new washer and dryer. What's this? Don't bu- and they, they immediately go buy a Speed Queen or buy this brand. And we said, well, look, we're looking at the Speed Queen. It's all mechanical parts. There's no buttons. There's no bells and whistles. They say they last. I said, well, we need more. We don't want the agitator. Well, the company that's done this the longest is LG. So he said, okay, that makes sense. They've done this the longest. They're pretty good at it. But the mechanics, you go to these mom and pop stores where so, some some old guy is standing behind. He knows his stuff. And he'll probably tell you, you will never use this. You will never use that. And you're going to say, but but I want it. He goes, and he'll, he'll be the first to smack you upside the head and say, why? You don't need this. Do you want it to work or do you want to program it from your couch? And he'll be like this first five. It'll last you a couple of years, and then the electronic component's going to die, and you're going to have to replace the whole thing. So it's it's just like uh, you know if, if you've heard the the arguments about tech packages and cars, and you know it's got this incredible surround sound system, and look, it's got a dock for your your iPod, and then you know two or three years down the road when technology has completely upended itself yet again, you're looking at the 40 pin connector sitting there in your car and you're looking at your new iPhone. You're going, that doesn't fit anymore. I guess that's worthless. I mean, granted there are adapters and stuff, but you know, technology, you don't buy tech for the super long term, right? That's why technology is great in these little components that you can yank out and replace. It's the Unix philosophy, but with your hard-earned time and money. Look, if you're going to replace all this stuff and you're okay with it and you want to do this, then yeah, it's great. I, look, it's more power to you. We Look, I really do want to control my toaster and my coffee maker before I get out of bed in the morning. I just don't trust it to work. And until you can prove to me, which we haven't been able to secure anything now, that it works, what are we doing? We're just wasting everyone's time and it's gonna something's gonna happen and they're gonna issue a fix and it's not gonna work and no one's gonna update it because that's the other thing. You're gonna have, a, like I said, a software update for your fridge or a firmware update to fix a security bug. I mean. So, so what happens when your Bluetooth locks decide, decide to restart when it's raining outside for a security update and you're left there, you know, Holding, holding your phones and just, just open, waiting for the thing to boot up. So, talking about Bluetooth locks, I can take my garage door opener. I can open my garage door. That will trigger off the nest to start warming up. It will unlock the doors. And I guess, I don't know, I don't have to touch a key. I just have to get in the car. And if I have one of those Bluetooth uh, key fobs on your car, I don't have to touch anything. There's no keys. Keyless house. 
you know, you know I, we're we're gonna have some fun with your keyless house and uh, in my software defined radio. And well, the good part is one of the new my new new house resolution is I used to be really picky. I used to not care where I tell people where I live. Oh, I live here. Like who really cares? You know what? Let's be a little more discreet about it. I, yeah, I live in central New Jersey, and we'll go from there because. Because you know what? Even though that's publicly accessible, maybe it's not the best idea to completely tell everyone where I live. I post it as a business on Google Maps and everything else. So now I have a new house, new everything. We can start with that. I, I'm so confident in my security that I will tell everyone that I live on the planet Earth. Soul system, third one from the sun. Can't miss it. <laughs> so. Anyway, that's it for our show. Again, look at CES. Look at it. See if you really need a Wi-Fi enabled chopstick or a Wi-Fi. Wait, enabled tell me that's not a thing. I think it is. If you keep on going. Oh. Down. Uh, or anything else. I I, I can't even. I, I don't even know what else to tell you. I mean, the light bulb. This, we've already lost the light bulbs. This is this is absolutely ridiculous. Just go look at some of the CES coverage and just. Try to look at it realistically. Would I ever use this? And yeah, CES is famous for the crazy outlandish things that no one would ever use. But this year, it's like, hey, let's throw Wi-Fi chips in virtually everything and see what happens. And GPS chips and this and that and the other. <sighs> anyway, we're out of time. So we will see you next week. Bye. See you, everyone. Stop. Pause.